Hello and welcome to this episode of Inside PTI. My name is Jason Webster. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, today we're going to talk about a neat little study that we've been working on at the PTI farm that involves strip cropping. Now, this is kind of what it looks like in the field. Now, you're probably wondering, what in the world are these guys doing? We are alternating strips or blocks of corn and soybeans in the same field. And you may be thinking, why in the world would anybody in their right mind want to do this? Well, the whole idea with this strip cropping system is to plant a tall crop such as corn next to a small crop of soybeans to maximize sunlight interception. You know, here we're, we're trying to harvest more sunlight in the tall crop being corn to improve photosynthesis efficiency and ultimately to increase yield. And so the big question is, does this actually work? And, you know, believe it or not, in 2021, it was our second year of testing strip cropping, and it showed up as our number two highest return on investment at the farm in an additional $166 per acre. So it did work pretty well this past year in 2021. Let's talk about it a little bit. This is some strips that we put in back in 2020. These were 16 row strips or 40 foot strips of corn and soybeans. We chose 40 foot back in 2020 because it kind of fit our existing equipment here at the farm and we thought we wanted to document, you know, start off in these wider 40 foot strips and then, you know, figure out what that does and then we'll work our way down to some narrow strips that we'll talk about here in a little bit. But multiple replications out in the field to trying to analyze, you know, does this, this strip cropping offer any advantages in this alternating block system? And again, we're, we're using soybeans as a short crop to allow corn on the outside edges to harvest more sunlight and hopefully to increase corn yield. And did it work? Well, here's the results from 2020. So this is two years ago. And to interpret this graph you're looking at on the screen, you have to think about a 16 row planter. Looking right at a 16 row planter, the center of the graph is the center of the planter. And as we went to the outside wings of the planter, okay, yield went up anywhere from nine to 11%. Well, what does that mean? Well, to the highest degree, we were seeing yield advantages of 25 bushel to the acre times the price of corn that year in 2020, this led to gains of $95 per acre in revenue. And so we thought, wow, what just happened here? We're seeing some pretty nice you know, yield increase in revenue increases on the outside edges of the corn next to the soybeans. Let's talk about the soybeans for a minute. You know, we're using the soybeans as a short crop to allow you know, corn to get all the sunlight gain. What is it doing to soybeans? Well, just the opposite of corn, unfortunately we were seeing yield losses of on average 15 bushel to the acre because of shading effects. And I'll show you more about this here in a second, but average yield losses of 15 bushel to the acre, you'll notice the highest yields we saw in the strip cropping in soybeans was in the center of the blocks as we got to the, to the, to the sides of corn, the edges of the corn, that's when yield went down in our soybeans. And this caused tremendous revenue losses of nearly $146 to the acre. And if you remember, we made about $95 to the acre on corn and we gave up all of those gains here on the soybean. So we thought, well, maybe this isn't going to be a system that, that works real well. But, you know, I, I still couldn't help thinking about the nearly $100 revenue gains we were achieving on corn. And I thought, maybe there's something here. Let's try to improve the system. This is where the system needs improvement is in the soybeans. Tremendous losses, and it's because of the shading effect. Look at this. This is 16 rows, uh, 16 row blocks or 40 foot blocks out in the field. This picture was taken later in the afternoon, early evening when the sun is setting in the western horizon. And you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five rows of soybeans that are getting shaded. Well, I have a question for you folks. Do, do soybeans need sunlight too? Yes, obviously they do. They're not receiving 100% sunlight here, and this is why we're seeing a yield detriment on the edges of, of, of the corn with these soybeans. This happens twice a day, early in the morning. You come out at 5 o'clock in the morning, watch the sun come up. This shade moves over to the eastern side, but it's always on the edges, and every single day this is happening. Um, the shading effect's happening every single day. 
So that was 2020. We said 2021, let's try to fix this system because we are seeing some advantages, some pretty big advantages in the corn. So let's change the system up a little bit. One of the changes is we, we still looked at, at 40 foot or 16 row blocks, but we tried to implement short corn on the outside edges that would maybe uh, help eliminate some of the shading in soybeans. You can see we, we still had a tall uh, corn hybrid in the centers. And then we started looking at the size of the blocks. We said, you know, maybe we need to, to decrease those 40 foot blocks down to 20 foot blocks. And we kind of knew that, that having smaller blocks would offer us a yield advantage, but we still, in our first year of testing back in 2020, we needed to document what the differences were in a 40 foot scenario. And then we said, we'll evaluate it from there to, to go into smaller blocks. So we chose 20 foot or eight row blocks of corn and soybeans to see any differences in this type of situation. Now, let's go look at yield in 2021. Again, with the 16 row or 40 foot blocks. In this graph, you'll see the, the center of the graph is the yellow bar, that's the center of the planter. And look how, as we go out to the wings of the planter again, yield does in fact increase in corn. Again, the sunlight, um, you know, the increase in, 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 in sunlight harvest actually did give us some higher corn yields. We, we took 220 bushel corn on average to 270 to 280 bushel corn on the outside edges. So it did work again. Those were in north-south rows, or excuse me, those were in east-west rows. Look what happens when we put them in north-south rows. Tremendous yield again, 220 bushel corn in the center of that 16 row planter. As we go out to the wings of the planter, now we're looking at yields of over 300 bushel to the acre. Tremendous yield gains. Ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen anything like this. This is dry land corn, this is not irrigated, and we're seeing 300 bushel um, of corn in, in this type of situation. It was tremendous to watch this in the field. It gets better yet. We go to our 20 foot, our smaller blocks of corn, and we were, we were raising over 300 uh, bushel corn, 309 to be exact. But look at this. The centers of the planter, you know, when we looked at 16 row blocks, we were averaging 220 bushel corn. When we go to 20 foot blocks, we increase that 220 to 240 bushel corn. The center of these blocks were actually receiving more sunlight as well. But there's tremendous yield gains in this situation, and there's no doubt in my mind this, this increase in sunlight harvest is working for us. Look at the situation we've got here with corn. 40-foot blocks are giving us 27 to almost 38 bushel yield gains. Those were tremendous, but look what, happens, look what happened when we went to 20-foot blocks. East-west rows, north-south rows, 55 to over 60 bushel advantages to the acre. I don't know that we had that high of yield gains in anything that we tested at the PTI farm in 2021. These, again, dry land, non-irrigated corn, giving us some really high yield advantages. Now, let's go back to the soybeans. We talked about it being a yield detriment back in 2020. What happened in 2021? Same thing. Look at, the, look at this picture here. You see the shading. It's 100% shading in these soybeans. You look at the corn, full sunlight. Okay, a major difference in this situation right here in the field. Here's the 20 foot blocks. Look how half, you know, 50% shading effect. This was taken in the morning. Okay, when the sun's coming up from the eastern horizon, we've got shade on half of this 20 foot block of soybeans. We get to later in the day, the sunlight is gonna move to the western horizon, and all of a sudden, the other half of this 20 foot block receives shade as well. So during the day, 100% of these beans are getting shaded at least some point during the day. Look at this, this picture. This is what it all comes down to right here. These soybeans next to the corn, you don't see any sunlight. And this is one of the major things we learned from this strip cropping study. These soybeans were planted in an east-west fashion. And that eliminates the shading effect that, that occurs when you plant these in a north-south fashion. So it took us two years to figure this out, but if we can plant our soybeans in east-west rows, this really helps with this sunlight shading detriment that we saw in previous uh, systems. Now, we still saw yield loss. Now this is in north-south rows of soybeans. We're averaging just under eight bushel yield losses in soybeans. And again, this is from the shading effect. 
But look what happens when we switch from a north-south planted row to an east-west planted row. Those eight bushel losses go down to three bushel average losses. We're still losing soybean yield, but it's tremendously better when we switch the rows around and we plant them east and west. This is what it all comes down to. This is the economics of the whole system that we had in 2021. And, you know, the soybeans did, in fact, lose us money in every situation in both 20 foot and 40 foot blocks. But look at the corn revenue amounts. We're bringing in 275 to over 300 hours additional revenue in corn. Even when you take out the losses from soybeans, the 20 foot blocks were making us anywhere from 190 to almost 240 additional dollars per acre 20 foot blocks did in fact do better than 40s but 40 foot blocks still 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 one if you will uh, as well we were bringing in 100 to 130 dollars of additional revenue even in that wider platform so today's inside pti agronomy tip of the day is sunlight plays a major role in the production of grain and crops and strip cropping optimizes the amount of sunlight that we can harvest in corn and can offer us huge yield gains. Now soybeans, soybeans did in fact give us yield losses, but when we switched around our rows to plant them in an east-west fashion, we eliminated some of the shading that occurred. And if I was going to implement a strip cropping system on my own home farm, I would definitely plant this type of system in an east-west fashion. If the farm and the layout of the farm, you know, the, the um, elevation, things like that would allow me to do that. And lastly, consider the smallest block size possible for your operation to optimize corn yield. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us for, for this episode of Inside PTI. If you've got any questions about anything that we've talked about, reach out to any Precision Planning Premier dealer or send us an email at InsidePTI at PrecisionPlanning.com. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you on the next episode of Inside PTI.